Good evening. I welcome you all very much indeed to our time in front of the Eucharist, Christ present in our midst, as we gather. I welcome you into this oasis of peace and calm as Christ remains with us constantly. But how lovely it is to be in his presence, exposed in the blessed sacrament, the Eucharist, Christ himself. We journey as a people during the season of Lent, a time of change, a time of renewal, a time of being shaped into something new. Let's begin our time of adoration in the presence of Christ this evening as we invoke the blessing of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We still ourselves in the presence of Jesus himself. He wants to reach into our hearts, our minds, our lives, our stories. He wants to be with us every step of the way. Perhaps we are carrying all sorts of burdens, anxieties or fears about the future, particularly in a world that seems so fractured, fragmented, broken. And yet, in the midst of such fragmentedness, there can be moments of growth, healing, renewal and strengthening. Let's take a little moment just to still our hearts in God's presence, the presence of his Son. Let's call to mind those aspects of our lives that we are worried about. This is our opportunity to hand everything over, but particularly, as always, to pray for healing, deep healing, an unravelling of those knots that we all experience in life. Let us be still just for a little while. still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin Found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. Awesome is the sight, our radiant King of Light, be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Amen. 
healing plays a significant part of the Gospels. And the journey of Jesus as part of his proclaiming the kingdom of God, he brings healing, not to everybody, but they too can be brought healing in different ways. But he brings physical healing, emotional healing. He brings a spiritual healing into the lives of all. But in the gospel today, I was intrigued by the healing that he brought to the woman who was brought into the exposed market square, caught as they thought. There were those who were willing to condemn her and held the stones in their hands to do just that. So how did that woman feel? There was a sense of rejection, a sense of isolation, embarrassment in the midst of the crowd gathered around her, who were her judge and jury. It's interesting that in the market square, there is Christ himself standing, testing his nerve and just trying to push her a little further. The crowds ask him as to what they should do, naming the law of Moses, of course. But Jesus challenges them in a very gentle way and yet profound. He writes on the sand using his finger. It is said he was writing the sins of those who were about to throw the stones. What I'd like you to think of this evening is that journey from isolation, rejection, pain, interior suffering, into a whole new experience through her encounter with Christ. Her name is not given. And yet, in her uniqueness, this experience would change life forever, I am sure. What I'd like us to do maybe is to take a little moment just to savour that encounter. We know what happens insofar as they drop the stones one by one and the elder begins to move away first, followed by those who are junior in rank. They drop the stones because Jesus exposes them in the midst of the market square. He reveals their fragmentedness. Was there a sense of healing that was brought to them as well in the gospel? Did they begin a journey of renewal, understanding that they were quick to condemn? And how they need to reckon with their own lives, to put their own lives in order first. But let's come back to the woman. The woman who in her isolation is left standing with Christ. Let's take a moment or two just to ask the Spirit to help us in the presence of Christ to paint the picture of what that must have been like. Let us stand with that woman today. Let us look into the face of Christ, the healing face of Christ. Healing can be brought in a variety of ways, as I've said. If we are open to that healing, willing to be shaped and moulded, it can make a difference. Let's just concentrate on that face of Christ 
a compassionate face, a face of forgiveness and acceptance, a challenging healing, a challenging forgiveness. Have they not condemned you? Where are they? says Jesus. Neither do I condemn you, he says. Go and sin no more. It's quite incredible, the chemistry between the unnamed woman and Jesus himself. And how in those moments of tenderness, he does not condemn, understands her story, her background, understand, he understands all that has happened in her life, the brokenness, the sense of being unloved, not belonging, unacceptable in people's eyes. Maybe this was the first time that she felt that sense of acceptance, a sense of being at peace, a sense of her embarrassment being saved by a stranger who she had never met before. Here is an encounter of a difference an encounter that brings profound change. He accepts this woman. He understands. And the gentle challenging urges her to, in essence, begin a sense of mission, missionary activity, bringing the good news, good news of the kingdom, which she experienced that day. So what about you and me? Jesus looks upon us as we, in his presence this evening, in the Eucharist, turn to him and ask him to bring us healing, renewal, strength, acceptance, belonging. What are those elements that we all carry with us? What are those experiences that perhaps cast their shadow from the past? Perhaps, like the courageous woman in the gospel today, we might be able to hand over our lives to Jesus and ask him to look into our eyes with the same compassion and understanding and love. St. Paul spoke today very beautifully about how he was running, running to capture the prize, the prize being that presence with Christ for all eternity. This was the goal of Paul in his proclaiming the kingdom of God, a missionary following Christ as well. So Lord, we come before you as we run the race ourselves and we bring our brokenness we ask you to grant us your healing and your strength in every possible way. Let us just take stock for a little moment and to name that aspect of healing that we need in our lives today. Maybe we carry people in our hearts as well, asking God to bring healing into their lives. The images that we see around the world speak of a world that's literally hungry in places like Afghanistan, South Sudan. We see the brokenness, 
that war can cause in Ukraine and so many different nations in conflict. There is the open wounds of bereavement, of loss. And yet, in the midst of it all, there is the healing touch, the paramedic, the firefighters, those friends and neighbours who come to the rescue of their friends, who stand together. We see the welcome that refugees have received in so many different countries. Isn't God at work through them? There is always hope in the midst of difficulty. And surely there is indeed a great need for healing in our modern world. We pray this evening for a melting of hardened hearts. Pray for healing, renewal. Let's take a little moment of peace and calm this evening as we bring our intercessions. So perhaps let's take a little bit of time just to gather those intercessions, those prayers, those people that we carry in our hearts, those nations whose need of great healing and support. Let's take a little moment. Jesus, as we remain in your presence in the Eucharist, savouring that presence and your love radiating into our own lives, we pray, we pray for peace, peace in Ukraine and so many other areas that suffer conflict. The body of Christ still suffers. We pray for peace, we pray for renewal, putting down of weapons. Lord, bring peace. We pray for all our frontline workers in all the work that they do, particularly those in our National Health Service as we continue to battle with the COVID pandemic and also those who care for our sick in the community, in their own homes or in nursing homes. Lord bless them all. Please protect them in all that they do. I'm always in awe of the tremendous dedication of doctors and nurses and those who endeavour to do their very best for the sick, and how the sick can bring so much healing in turn. We remember all those who are unwell at this time, either through physical illness and or mental health issues. We ask you, Lord, to walk on the storms that they experience and to bring that sense of peace and healing deep healing. Be with those who suffer from addictions of any kind. Help them, Lord, to make the first step, the first step that can bring so much change and renewal. We pray this evening to, for the speedy recovery of Thomas, who is under dialysis in ICU after major surgery. We also pray for Helen to be blessed with complete and quick healing from breast cancer. We pray too for Hadrian's sister to receive healing from scoliosis. 
we pray also for Carlo and Andrea to receive complete healing from cancer. And we pray for Mary Kuti, Mary Kuti, to receive complete healing from varicose veins. Lord, grant all healing. Grant them strengthening and your love. Let's just call to mind those that we do know in our hospitals, nursing homes, perhaps in our own community and indeed in our own families who need support, care and healing. Let's just call them to mind for a little moment. Lord, we commend all our sick into your love, and we ask you to grant them healing in every possible way. May your love touch their hearts. Be with all families and carers. Thank you for the healing that they bring and the tenderness that reveals your presence in the lives of the sick. Grant them your love. We pray for our beautiful world, which is in need of healing too. Our homeland, planet Earth, gifted to us in trust. It too requires healing. The cry of the poor, the cry of the earth. We entrust all our sick and our homeland. We entrust all those who are searching for you into your embrace and love this year. Just as the potter shapes the clay, so we ask you, Lord, to shape us into what you want us to. to sing a little verse of a lovely piece of music called Take Me Lord. Take me Lord, use my life in the way you wish to do. Heal me Lord, touch my heart, feel it always thinks of you. Take me now as I am. This is all I can offer. Here today I, the clay, will be molded by my Lord. I am weak. Fill me now with your strength and set me free. Make me whole, fashion me so that you will live in me. Hold me now in your hands. Warm me now with your spirit. Here today I, the clay, will be molded by my Lord. 
Lord. Help us to abandon ourselves into your love. Your presence gives us hope, gives us the ability and the strength to keep going in the midst of the storms that we face. Just as you welcomed that woman of great courage today in the gospel and gave her that sense of acceptance, forgiveness, belonging and new life, a healing of a difference, so too we ask you to reach into our lives to fill us with your acceptance, your healing, your forgiveness, indeed the ability to forgive ourselves. We leave the past in your hands. You love us for who we are and you want us to be happy. Strengthen us, Lord, as we journey in your name. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. And all you saints of God, pray for us. Finally, I just want to mention that it's always good to be spurred on by the saints. Saints are signposts, living signposts in many ways, to, to point us in the right direction. The communion of saints in heaven spurs us on too, of course. Our task is to befriend the saints who understand us, who journey with us and walk that way too, that pilgrimage of faith. So as we prepare for Easter, in these last couple of weeks, we journey to Jerusalem on Sunday, or Palm Sunday, and then we journey into that holy week. May it be a time of renewal, healing, and as we look forward to the dawn of that Easter joy, may Christ fill us all with new and a love which is beyond words. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask the intercession of Mary. Heal Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.